almost time for kids time. We're gonna be late. It's time to share. There's a world out there looking for a friend like Jesus. It's time to share. There's a world out there. Let's tell them that he loves us so. Let's tell them that he loves us so. Kids time. Kids time. Kids time. Hi, boys and girls. Have you ever noticed how happy you are when someone is kind to you, even in the smallest way? Maybe someone held the door open for you and smiled when you entered a store. Or perhaps you're feeling sad and someone notices and they ask, what's wrong? And you can tell they really do care and want to know. Or perhaps a teacher lets you make up a few extra points on an assignment so you can get a better grade in your class. It's really not that hard to make someone happy. Showing a little kindness here and there usually comes back to you eventually, sometimes in small ways and other times in big ways. That's what happened in our Bible story today. A woman showed a prophet of God a bit of kindness, and God poured out the most wonderful blessing on her. I'll tell you more about it in just a few minutes, but first, it's time for Nature Time. <laughs> Oh, hey everyone, it's me, Rich Aguilera. I'm so glad to see you. As usual, I'm here taking pictures of some of the amazing places that God has made. It's everywhere. I'm extra excited that you're with me here today because I am in an amazing place. You know how I like nature? Well, this place is a place that's been specially made so that you can appreciate the nature that God has made. This is summer camp. Where is it? Summer camp! Yeah, summer camp! Do you know about summer camps? They're places that are all over North America where you can come and learn about God, enjoy nature, make lots of friends, and have fun! Today I am at a camp in Michigan called Camp Osabel. It's great here. Hey, you know what? I've got an idea. Why don't we go around and I can take some pictures of the campers so you can see how great it is here. Come on! One of the first places I want you to see is one of my favorite activities. It's high adventure. Come on. Check it out. You can challenge yourself at the rock wall, or you can swing from a tree. You can even go zip lining through the treetops. Hey, we're here at the waterfront. Let's go. There's lots to do at the waterfront. You can play in the water, or you can try riding one of these. <laughs> wow! You can try snorkeling or the blob. Want to learn how to wakeboard? Don't worry, they'll teach you. There's even a go-kart track here. Hey, let's challenge one of the campers to a race. Come on. Hey, that camper passed me. I gotta catch up. I got beat by a camper. Good race, mud guy. <laughs> I was uh, racing Pastor Ken. Thanks, Pastor Ken. Hey, hey, we had a lot of fun, didn't we, Rich? <laughs> that was awesome. All right, mud guy. Hey, kids, this is Pastor Ken. He's the Michigan Conference Youth Director, and he's Miss Brenda's brother. Hey, let's take a selfie for the kids. Let's do it. Hey kids, there's a whole bunch of other stuff to do here at camp. Right, Pastor Ken? Yes, there is. Come on, guys. God is good. There is 
is so much to do at camp, you'll never be bored, and you will make some awesome friends and meet lots of new people. You'll do some silly stuff, build some pretty cool things, and the counselors and leaders, they're the greatest. They're there to make sure your time at camp is awesome and that you get to know God better while you are there. Camp Asabel is just one of many different camps for you to enjoy, and each one is a little bit different with a lot of cool things to do. Most importantly, each one of these camps has the goal of helping their visitors build a better relationship with the one who created them, God. If you would like to see a list of camps here in North America, visit the website AdventistCamps.org. Well, I've had a ton of fun visiting Camp Osabo with you here today. Remember, all of these camps are here for you to enjoy. Oh yeah, if you want to see some of the pictures that we've been taking here today, you can go to our website at kidstimeforjesus.org and click on Nature Time. Remember, God is the creator. Welcome to Learning Time. I'm glad you're here today because we are in a very special place and I've got a bunch of campers with me and where are we? Oshkosh! We're at Oshkosh, Wisconsin. We're at the Pathfinder International Campery. Are you having fun? Yes! <laughs> I thought so. And today we're gonna do a science experiment that you can do at home and this is really cool. But before we get into it, I'm going to find out who our helpers are. So let's find out their names and where are you from? Let's start with you. My name is Xavier and I'm from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Wow, thanks for coming today. And what is your name and where are you from? My name is Kaylin and I'm from San Jose, California. Oh, and thanks for being here. And what is your name and where are you from? My name is Alina and I'm from California. Wow, so we're all over, we're from everywhere, aren't we? Yeah! They're from all over the world. Well, this is an interesting experiment and it takes some safety glasses. So let's put your safety glasses on. Now, what you might want to do is you might want to get a little roll like this. This is a paper roll that we have a lot and we don't want to throw it away. We want to do what with it? Recycle, Recycle or reuse. reuse. Excellent. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the little paper tube and today we're going to be using some tissue paper. This is very, very, very fine tissue paper. I'm going to put it on the end of the tube. You can do this now. And then we're going to take a rubber band. Can you help me do that? We're going to put a rubber band around twice and make it kind of tight. And then we're going to find out if tissue paper is strong or weak. Is tissue paper strong? No! It's pretty what? Weak! Wait, okay, hang on to that for me right like this. And take this little rod right here, okay, and see if you can hold it up so we can see it. And see if you can force the rod, it's just a wooden dowel rod, all the way through the tissue paper. Can you? Did she do it? Yes! Yeah. Yeah. All the way through. So tissue paper is uh, weak, right? <laughs> okay, let's see what we can do. Let, now this experiment has to do with some particles. So what we're going to do, we have these little tubes here, and I'm going to pour some of this in yours. Now what we're using is salt today. Now if you don't have salt, you can use some sugar, and that always makes it a lot sweeter, right? <laughs> Yeah, so let's put some salt in there. And we have some dowel rods, and so we're gonna be using some dowel rods here today. So we're gonna, whoa, whoa, pour that in here like that. Here's your dowel rod right here, and here's yours as well, and I've got one for you. Now what I'd like, oh yes, you can pour that in there. I almost forgot to do that. How cool is that? That's right, we're gonna add a little more salt in there. Now we have the safety glasses on because we don't wanna get salt in our eyes, do we? No! A good idea. Okay, so what I want you to do, I'm going to show you. We're going to pick your uh, uh, little tube up and take your little dowel stick and push down inside right into that salt. Okay, and we're going to find out if the tissue paper is really strong or if it's weak or what happens when you try to force that stick down there. So let's try yours first. Pick yours up with your other hand and push it down and she's going to push really, really hard. Whoa! And it went all the way through. Now that's interesting. Why don't you try yours? Here we go. Take it up here and push it on down, push it on down, push it on down. And he's struggling, he's shaking, and he's a very strong young man. Okay, I'll stop right there for us. That's interesting. Now, why did hers go through and his not? What do you think? Maybe salt? Right, uh, not enough salt in there because he had a bunch of salt. That's interesting. Okay, let's try yours. Let's see how strong you are. And she's pushing down, pushing down, and pushing down. And don't strain too much. 
whoa, look at that, and it didn't work. She's got a lot of salt as well. Now, you and I might think that if you push straight down, all that salt has a lot of weight, right? And all the salt is pushing down, but it doesn't. When you push pressure on that stick and the stick is going down, it puts pressure on every, every grain of salt, and that pushes all the pressure to the side, to the side. That's where the pressure is going, not straight down. Is that cool or what? Yeah! And that's interesting. You know, that reminds me sometimes. Sometimes you and I feel a lot of pressure, don't we, on ourselves? Yes! yes. Sometimes we get all uptight because things are just kind of going this way and whatever. We're not too happy. But you know what? That pressure could hurt us, couldn't it? Yes. Uh, just like that tissue paper could break right through. But you know what? God takes that pressure and he puts it and he spreads that out so you and I can handle the pressure. Don't you want to handle your pressures of life? Yes! Oh, yeah. And God can do that for us. I think that is so cool. I want you to try this at home because you can do this and it's a neat experiment. Now, and every time we learn more about science, we're learning more about our God. Creator God. That's right. Connor, Gio, I've been waiting for you for worship. What? What happened? Where have you been? We were just looking at the horses. Yeah. Well, we went around the place, and we saw them right there in front of us. Yes? Mr. Uh, Mr. Farms' horses? He's yeah. some wonderful horses. What happened? But but then he started yelling at us for no reason. What do you, Mr. Fong, he loves kids. He's the kindest man I know. What, what happened? Well, we weren't trying to do anything wrong. We promised. We were just looking at the horses. Just a second, boys. I've been waiting for a call. Just... Hello, this is Miss Brenda. Mr. Fong. Oh, no. Yes, the boys are here. Was there any problem, Mr. Fong? Oh. Really? Oh, they're going to be so excited. Oh, I'm sure they'd love it. Oh, that's very sweet of you. Yes, yes, I'll tell them. I'm just getting ready to have worship with them, though, so could we, they come over in about 10 minutes? That sounds good. By the way, did you get those brownies I left for you yesterday? Yes, my homemade recipe. Oh, you're welcome. I just wanted to thank you so much for all your support of our Kids Network. Yes, thank you so much. God bless you, too. Uh-huh, I'll send them over when we're done. Yes. Uh-huh. Bye-bye now. Boys, that was Mr. Fong. And guess what? He wasn't yelling at you at all. You boys didn't do anything wrong. He wasn't yelling at you. You know what he was doing? He was trying to call you over because his horse just had a colt last night, a baby colt. Can you imagine? Have you guys seen a baby colt? No. He thought you would like to see it, and so that's why he was calling you. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. yeah. I told him right after worship you guys can come over, all right? Okay. okay. Well, our story today, it kind of ties in with this, actually, boys. Isn't God good how he does that? I love how he does that, because our story today is about Elisha. I love Elisha. Which one? Which story? Well, it's the story of the Shunammite woman, remember? Yeah. Long ago, there was a man named Elisha. <laughs> now, Elisha was a good man. He loved the Lord and spent most of his days sharing that love with others. During his many journeys, he would often pass through Shunem. And in Shunem, there lived a woman who had a great deal of respect for Elisha and his work. Whenever he was there, she would insist that he stay with her and her husband to get some well-needed rest and a meal. Seeing that Elisha was a man of God, they decided to build an extra room for him so that whenever he found himself in Shunem, he would have a bed to sleep in, a table and a stool to sit at, and food to eat. Over the years, Elisha often found himself a guest in their home. To repay their kindness, Elisha had asked what he could do for them. Although they asked for nothing, Elisha told them they would be blessed with something they did not have, a son. Proving God to be faithful, the very next year, the woman and her husband had a baby boy. Years passed, and the child grew strong. When he was old enough, he helped his father in the fields, until one day, the boy grew weary from the heat of the sun. Father, I don't 
feel well. My son, my son! Servant, come quickly! Take him to his mother! When brought before his mother, she had the servant bring him into the house where she held him as he sat on her knees. Not long after, the little boy died in his mother's arms. In her distress, she placed her son on Elisha's bed and went out to search for the prophet. She knew she needed his help. When Elisha saw her in the distance, he sent his servant to meet oh, her. Look, there's my good friend from Shunem. They are such gracious hosts. Gehazi, go to her and bring her to me at once. Right Thank away. you. Thank you. Elisha! Woman, control yourself! Gehazi, leave the woman alone. Can't you see that she's <laughs> deeply troubled? The Lord hasn't spoke to me about it yet, but please, tell me what's wrong. Is it your family? My son is dead. Gehazi, go quickly and put my staff on the boy's face. Run away, Prophet Elisha. Thank you. Elisha, why didn't I come all the way here to go back without you? I can't leave your side. Go. And so Gehazi, anxious to carry out his master's instructions, reached the house first. He did exactly as Elisha instructed, but his efforts had no effect on the boy. Great prophet, the boy, he did not awaken. It's okay, I will pray over him. Let's go. Heavenly Father, hear your humble servant. Breathe life back into this boy. So what happened? Was he healed? Well, the Bible says that Elisha put his face to the boy's face, his eye to the boy's eye, and his hands upon the boy's hands until he became warm. Elisha did this one more time and then... <laughs> Gehazi, bring in the boy's mother. Woman, take your son. For a second time, the faith of the woman had been rewarded. Through Elisha, God, the giver of all life, had restored her son. You see, boys, Elisha was known as a healer and a teacher, and he spent his whole life spreading God's word, and he inspired others to do the same. God wants us to spread the word too, right? That's right, Gio. Well, who knows? Maybe someday I'd grow up to be a preacher. Connor, you would be a wonderful preacher, but God doesn't expect us all to be preachers to witness for him, does he? We can witness to him right now. God wants all of us to be a witness for him. In fact, why don't we have prayer and ask Jesus to come into our hearts and lives and give us many opportunities to share him. And then after uh, prayer, you boys can uh, go on over to Mr. Fong's and see the new baby colt. Yeah. <laughs> Who would like to pray? I will. Okay, Gio, you have our prayer. Dear Jesus, Thank you for the wonderful day, and thank you for everything you give us. And thank you that Mr. Fogg didn't get mad at us, and that we gotta go see the baby horse. And help us be good witnesses for you. We love you, dear Jesus. Amen.
Boys and girls, it's time for Miss Brenda's Book of the Day! <laughs> and today's book, boys and girls, is our none other than our Pathfinder pin book I want to share with you today because today's program is all about our Pathfinder Campery in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And I have with us a, a Pathfinder that was at Oshkosh. Shayla, well, welcome to the program. Hi, Miss Brenda. Well, Shayla, I'm so glad you're here. Let's show the boys and girls what's in our book of the day because I traded lots of pins with a lot of Pathfinders because pin trading is huge at Pathfinders, isn't it? So why don't you help me hold this book right here and I want you to see uh, some of the pins that Miss Brenda traded at Campery. Okay, let's see, I've got the whole set of Michigan there. That's and cool. uh, thanks to my brother, um, uh, El Pastor Ken Mitchell, who's the youth director there in Michigan. And look, we have more conference pins, whole sets. And then look at these. You remember these spinners and so many um, spinners that they go because they, they spin around? Those are cool. Mm -hmm. And then look at this one. Can you see this? Now that looks like a flat one, but it's not. Look how it opens up. <sighs> That's really cool, isn't it? I love that one. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, I had so much fun trading pins with all the kids. Here's some from the, all the different states. Look at all California had some quite a few really cool pins. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we have Nevada. And this is the one I gave you. Yes, you traded me that one, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And uh, we had so much fun with that. Then let's look. Oh, here's Texas. Texas had a lot of really cool pins. They have ones every every campery. I love the ones from Texas. And mm -hmm. uh, and then we have some good ones from Tennessee. And uh, look at Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio. And uh, look at this one right down here. That's not that wonderful. I like that one. Yep. And more states over here. So we just flip through these real carefully. We got some from Canada up there. And um, also some, inter look at all these international ones. And we just have more wow. and more and more. There's just not enough time to show them all. We sure had a lot of fun at Campery trading pins, didn't we? <laughs> In fact, I should explain to uh, boys and girls that have never been to Pathfinders uh, or a Pathfinder Campery, every uh, Pathfinder Club, wherever you are, has their own pin designed. And when they come to Campery, which is only once every five years, they get to trade that pin with someone else. And they all try to trade their different pins. And they have sets that they try to get. And, and uh, there's always the most popular pins that everyone really wants. And so everybody's got pins on them and they're trading. So Miss Brenda did her fair share of trading right here. And uh, I want to thank all those Pathfinders that traded with me. I also want to thank our 3ABN graphic designer, Christine. Nybauer for creating this book so that we can display them. So I want to thank you for that. And uh, Shayla, I want to ask you, what was uh, one of your highlights at, at uh, Pathfinder Campery? Every night they showed Daniel in the lion's den and it made it come alive. Yes, and in the evening there was a, a program uh, that uh, they had every night that they did a play. And, to the, and this year's theme was Forever Faithful. And the story was about Daniel in the lion's den and his faith that he had that God would protect him in that lion's den. I mean, what an example of the faith God wants us to have. Uh, so I loved that theme, Forever Faithful. And uh, I know that the kids too, like you say, it makes that story come to, come to life. And Betty Whitehead is in charge of that play every year and she did an incredible job. So, um, I, and I know it's an, um, a tremendous amount of work. Tell me what else, you did something special um, with some of your Pathfinders when you were walking around. And in fact, you called it R-A-P. What does that stand for? It stands for 
Random, random acts, acts of, of prayer. prayer. And tell me what that what you did for random acts of prayer. We went around and prayed with some people and took pictures and sent them to them so they could see it. Okay, so but you but the the idea was to pray with people. Mm -hmm. And did you ever ask them what they needed prayer for? Would what they would like you to pray about? Yes, sometimes. Mm -hmm. Because it's important that we find out what is it that we want to uh, uh, pray about. And whenever someone says, will you pray for me? I say, boys and girls, what would you like me to pray for? Because um, I want to pray specifically to, to God. Prayer is a powerful, uh, powerful tool that God gives us to communicate directly with Him. And there's a lot of power in prayer. In fact, the privilege of prayer is always ours, and the power of prayer is always God's. Um, well, I would really want to encourage boys and girls every to come to Pathfinder Campery. Join your Pathfinder Club and get a part of it. It's an amazing uh, 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 organization and it's so fun and you get to meet lots of really cool kids and do a lot of cool stuff. I think it's, uh, lo uh, look at your Seventh-day Adventist Church and, and join your Pathfinder Club today, won't you? Thank you, Shayla, for joining us today. I really appreciate you coming uh, uh, all the way here to, th to Kids Time to tell us about Campery. And boys and girls, remember, wherever you go, it's Kids Time to share Jesus. <laughs>